Today I want to talk with you about heart murmurs. So the question is asked, what are heart murmurs? Heart murmurs are heart sounds produced when blood is pumped across a heart valve and creates a sound loud enough to be heard with a stethoscope. The next thing you may want to ask is, are all murmurs bad? The answer is simple, no, all murmurs are not bad. In fact, murmurs can be put into four categories. They are, number one, systolic murmurs, number two, diastolic murmurs, number three, continuous murmurs, and number four, innocent murmurs. It should be noted that murmurs can also be graded on a scale of one to six, grade one being very faint and grade six being very loud. Let's talk about systolic murmurs. Systolic murmurs occur during the contraction of the heart. There are two types of systolic murmurs that exist. The first one is an ejection murmur when blood is pumped through a narrow aortic valve, and the second one is a regurgitant murmur when blood is flowing back into the left ventricle through a leaky mitral valve. The next category is diastolic murmurs. Diastolic murmurs occur during the filling phase of the left ventricle. As blood flow from the left atrium to the left ventricle, if the mitral valve is too narrow, it causes a murmur known as mitral stenosis. The second type of diastolic murmur is aortic regurgitation. In this murmur, the aortic valve is leaky and blood flows from the aorta back into the left ventricle. A continuous murmur occurs through the cardiac cycle. That is, it occurs throughout systole and diastole. The murmur that fits this description is known as patent ductus arteriosus. It is a connection between the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. Blood continuously flows across this opening throughout the cardiac cycle. The last category are those that are described as innocent murmurs. These include stills murmur, venous hum, pulmonary flow murmur, and pulmonary ejection murmur. Now let's talk about specific murmurs. I will start with mitral stenosis and we will talk briefly about the pathophysiology. Mitral stenosis is a diastolic murmur. This is commonly caused by rheumatic fever, which leads to scarring and narrowing of the mitral valve orifice. In mitral stenosis, left atrial pressure is increased, pulmonary venous pressure is increased, pulmonary congestion develops, and pulmonary hypertension and atrial fibrillation are late findings. Let's talk about the clinical presentation of mitral stenosis. These patients can experience the following, exertional dyspnea, orthopnea or paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, palpitation or chest pain, hemoptysis, atrial fibrillation. There is an opening snap followed by a low pitch diastolic rumble. This murmur is best heard with the bell of the stethoscope at the apex while the patient is in the left lateral decubitus position. This murmur is also best diagnosed with echocardiogram, which shows a narrow fish mouth shape orifice. 
The next diastolic murmur is aortic regurgitation. It is also known as aortic insufficiency and it is caused by incomplete closure of the aortic valve leaflets. As a result, blood flows back from the aorta into the left ventricle and subsequently cause left ventricular dilation and left ventricular hypertrophy. Acute aortic regurgitation may be caused by trauma, aortic dissection, and infective endocarditis. On the other hand, chronic aortic regurgitation may be caused by bicuspid aortic valve, rheumatic fever, systemic lupus, syphilis, hypertension, and any type of connective tissue disorder. The clinical presentation of aortic regurgitation. These patients can present with the following. Dyspnea on exertion, orthopnea or paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, palpitation, especially when lying supine, chest pain, a wide pulse pressure may be present with elevated systolic blood pressure and a normal diastolic blood pressure. They may have what is known as Corrigan pulse, which is also known as water hammer pulse. They may also have what is described as Austin Flint murmur. This is a low-pitched diastolic rumble caused by the mixing of blood from the left atrium and the regurgitant flow from the aorta. It is similar to mitral stenosis. Aortic regurgitation is a diastolic decrescendo murmur best heard at the left sternal border. The murmur increases with hand grip. Aortic regurgitation is effectively evaluated with echocardiogram. The next murmur is aortic stenosis, which is a systolic murmur. This is usually caused by rheumatic fever or may be caused by bicuspid aortic valve or calcification. Long-standing aortic stenosis results in left ventricular dilation, left ventricular hypertrophy, left ventricular dysfunction, and mitral regurgitation. Let's talk about the clinical presentation of aortic stenosis. These patients can present with the following. Some may remain asymptomatic for several years. However, when they do become symptomatic, they can present with angina, syncope, and heart failure. The murmur is a harsh crescendo, decrescendo systolic murmur, which is heard in the right second intercostal space. The murmur radiates to the carotid and is described as diminished and delayed, otherwise called parvus etardus. It may be diagnosed with echocardiogram, but definitive diagnosis is made with cardiac catheterization. The next murmur we want to talk about is mitral regurgitation. Mitral regurgitation may be acute or chronic. It may be caused by endocarditis, rheumatic fever, dilated cardiomyopathy, and papillary muscle rupture. It causes backflow into the left atrium with elevation of left atrial pressure and left atrial enlargement. This backflow can cause pulmonary veins dilation and ultimately pulmonary edema. Cardiac output can be decreased, resulting in hypertension and shock. The clinical presentation of mitral regurgitation. 
Patients with mitral regurgitation may present with the following. Shortness of breath on exertion or thopnea, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, palpitation, atrial fibrillation is a common finding, and it is a holosystolic murmur that radiates to the back or clavicle and is heard best at the apex. Let's talk about mitral valve prolapse now. Mitral valve prolapse is caused by redundant chordae tendinae. As a result, the leaflets bottle into the left atrium during systole. This bottling of the leaflets result in mitral regurgitation. Mitral valve prolapse is the most common cause of mitral regurgitation in developed countries. The clinical presentation of mitral valve prolapse. Most patients are asymptomatic during their lifetime. However, when patients become symptomatic, they may develop palpitation and a typical chest pain. The murmur produces a mid-systolic click or a late-systolic click. It is also described as a late systolic murmur. Well, before we close, I like the last thing I want to mention is the effects of special maneuvers on murmurs, such as standing valsalpa maneuver, sustained hand grip, and squatting. Standing and valsalpa maneuver increase the murmur and click in mitral valve prolapse because these maneuvers reduce left ventricular chamber size, allowing the click or murmur to occur early in systole. Sustained hand grip increases the murmur of mitral valve prolapse. In contrast, it decreases the murmur of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, a topic that was not discussed in this presentation. The last thing is squatting. Squatting decreases the murmur and click in mitral valve prolapse because it increases left ventricular chamber size, thus delaying the onset of the murmur and the click. Well, thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. I wish you well. Good night.